Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to be making bison burgers for us to have and I need some hamburger rolls. But I don't want to buy mine. I'm going to make these and these are a cheesy onion burger buns that I'm going to be making. And uh, let's get started on it. I'll put my glasses on. You're going to need two cups of warm water. When they say warm, they only mean body temperature. Don't go any higher than your wrist. Because if it's warm on your wrist, you can go over the temperature, which will kill your yeast, I mean the water. If you get the uh, water warmer than your wrist, you can kill your yeast. A slight warmth, very slight, will be fine, but not anymore. And if it's cold, it's going to take too long for your yeast to proof. Now, I know my yeast is always, always fresh, so I don't have to worry. I use a lot of it. You're going to need one packet or two and a fourth teaspoons if you buy it by the jar, like me. I'm wondering if I shouldn't make a double cheese uh, bison burger today. I haven't decided how I want to put it together yet. Also thinking of a bison meatloaf, which would be good. And I know you need fat, and I know bison is a lean meat. So if I wanted to make a regular meatloaf, it would be, you know, I'd have to make the ratio a little different to follow through. Alright, my water is fine. You need a teaspoon of sugar to go into the yeast. I might as well pull you down so you can see what I'm doing. I already put my yeast in a big bowl. You're going to need a ceramic bowl that's glazed because it holds the heat better. Metal and glass, I've tried them all, but this is the one that will really get your breads and rolls going if you work with yeast. So by all means, do invest in these. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have, two, I have one larger than this. I have two smaller. One of them I use for uh, collecting my peelings to bury in the yard during the summer. But you can get them at a J.C. Penny. You can get them on Amazon. And if you go into quaint little stores, if you can find them now, uh, you can buy these. I'm sure you'll find them online too. But that, I'm not sure about. But anyway, a teaspoon of sugar. And we're actually using uh, the sugar as a booster for the yeast get it to rise a little faster for it is it's food. It loves sugar. And they say you're going to proof this. That means that the yeast is going to start foaming. But while that's doing it, I have to chop up some you're going to need half of a small onion, and you're going to need two cups of shredded, sharp cheddar cheese. So I'm going to start chopping my onion. And I've got water on this counter, and I can afford it. Not when you're working with yeast. I am collecting my onion peelings, and uh, because they're antitoxins are in them, if I can sit there and I'll wash them and dehydrate them, I can sit there and make sure that when I use it as a seasoning, I will get my antitoxins that fight to keep my body healthy. 
When you have a kitchen that's working, a working, what we call a working kitchen, I'm going to tell you there's so much that, how do you put it in there? That's the music. There's so much that goes on in the kitchen and food and stuff coming out constantly. Women used to do bake sales. You didn't buy the food, you actually baked it. I've been to some bake sales and they actually do not bake it. They sit there and they buy it and bring it. And I said, oh my God, we have really gone backwards. I think what it is, and this is just an opinion, I think people aren't happy with who they are. They're not happy with their sex, they're not happy about life, they're not happy about anything. The only pleasure they have is taking drugs or uh, drinking. What a sad shape of a society. shredded sharp cheddar cheese. So we're going to be gratering. So. That I need for the flour. This I don't need. Mm -hmm. So I can see. Do I see yeast proofing? That's it. Mine is very much alive. See that foam developing on it? So I take my time, give it time to do what it has to do, and I will do what I have to do. And we get along quite well. need extra cheese because we're going to be putting it on top of these as well before they go into the oven with some other things so make sure you have enough because you're going to need another half a cup later here and do another load. These are very good. I would have made the sourdough, but I decided at the last minute I didn't want a meatloaf, so I didn't have time to make the sourdough ones. And then I have regular ones, just regular old. Like I said, I have a different recipe. Sometimes I have three or four recipes, sometimes seven or eight, and they're all done a little different. Well, that's about two cups. I know, just estimating. Okay, you are going to put the cheese and the onion into this. Now, I really want you to get a good look at this. That is an 
active yeast. This is what your yeast is supposed to look like when you proof it. And you're going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay, what else are we missing here? Let's see, we got the yeast, we got the sugar, we got the water, we got the cheese, we got the onion, and we got the salt. Now, all we're gonna have to do is work this. I'm gonna have to get my sourdoughs up. I'm gonna have to be feeding them soon. All right. Six to seven, okay. I don't need much more, I know. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I can't remember where I put everything. I am adding a half a cup of whole wheat flour to make these a little more nutritious. You know I'm going to do it. But I'm not adding a lot. I'm not going to have us just eat white flour either. Now this part I know pretty much on my own. We're going to add two cups of flour. to keep your uh, yeast in the refrigerator. I keep mine right below where the butter dish is. That is the right temperature. Do not freeze it. It dies. If you leave it out, it will die faster. Also, stores will sell it to you with an expiration date on them. And don't tell me they don't because I have walked into places and they have. And I told them point blank, uh, this is dead. This is a live culture. And, I, and I, I take it right to the counter. Of course, they don't like me in the store. I've been thrown out of a, a store because I did that. And I told one person, he said, okay. And he put it back for somebody else to buy. And you wonder why people can't make bread. They said, I can't do it. It's because you don't know. If you don't know, in your ignorance, they take advantage of you. This is also this flour we're using. Except for that half a cup of whole wheat. By adding that, uh, for people who don't like whole wheat, uh, adding a half a cup like this will not affect the flavor, will not affect the texture or anything. All it's going to do is make it a little more nutritious for you. 
that's what I'm trying to show you is you can do these things and make your food more nutritious by just doing simple things. I'm not asking you to uh, do uh, cook the meals that I cook. I mean, I just give you ideas. This is a half cup I'm using so you can watch what I'm putting down. And if you like a recipe, by all means, it's yours to take. I don't need these anymore. I'll make a bed with your flour. As you can see, you don't think that you eat a lot of flour or you use a lot. You buy the food that's already made, you can see the amount of flour that this country uses. And what the world uses. From desserts to coating meat to gravies. And by the way, potatoes go in that same category <laughs> of starch that you make things with. Be it tortillas, be it rolls, biscuits, muffins, etc. Cakes, pies, cookies. And in the ARE readings, they only say one starch per meal. Now this is going to have to be kneaded a bit, which I couldn't be doing. And as you see, this is why we wear aprons. <laughs> we get quite dirty, but it keeps our clothes clean. Doing this action of kneading, or you want to beat it in a mixer for like seven minutes on a high, but it'll burn your mixer out. You will uh, activate the yeast and really wake it up and get it going. You did the first proofing, then this gets it all excited. And you have to do it for like seven minutes. So while I'm doing this, and as I need flour, I'll add it if I do, because I'm up to five or six cups. I'm getting right up to the point where I'm not going to be adding much more. Okay, I'm back. Uh, here it is. As you can see, it's smooth and elastic. You see how it's acting? It's just beautifully. As you handle it, the cheese is melting. So uh, don't get upset if you're kneading at the beginning. You get the onions and the cheese, and it just don't look like they're mixing. You just keep working it. The cheese will melt from your hand and make this nice and smooth. Now you're going to have to wash your bowl and get it very warm. And I have this as a sink. <laughs> I've got to make glue. So we're going to set this to double. nice and warm and clean and you're going to add some oil into it to grease it so the dough doesn't dry out because this is not a sourdough this is a different one so we have to do it a little different It 
upside down and twist it. And then flip it over and make sure the oiled side is up. You're gonna put a couple of towels over this, put it in a warm place, and we are gonna let this double. Now, if you wanna know how much flour I use, you can use, they're recommending anywhere from six to seven cups of flour for this recipe. And if you're watching me and counting, you know what I did. Okay. Now it's called the waiting game. We have to wait. Let's <laughs> see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. I started punching it down. Here it is. It rose very nicely. Okay, let's see what they want us to do with this. All right, they want us to roll this into a rope and cut it into 12 pieces. They say to grease two baking sheets. Uh, I greased one, I'll probably have to grease another one. All right. And we're gonna shape each piece into a ball. So, let's get that done first. First they want this rolled into a rope. If I do it at 12 inches, I should be able to get it. Try and get it to 12 inches. No, I have to it up to 12 inches. Instead of making it into a long roll, Let's just squeeze it out till 12, and then I can sit there and just do what I'm going to do with it. Mm. Okay. Should give me twelve. There's one. Two. One's a little small. My ends are a little small, so let me get these in a ball and I'll start getting an idea what I can do with them. And a lot of them are about the same size. Which 
this other one looks a little big. Well, this looks like the biggest one. I need it down to size. All right, we got 12 of them. <laughs> okay. Now they want us to put these into a ball. Now to get them into a ball the way you want them to, you take the outer edges and pinch it, and pinch it, and you keep turning it and doing that. And then on the top, it comes out like that. All right? I just want you to make these balls, and that's how you do it. Because see, you're not interested in the bottom, you're interested on how it's gonna look on the top, see? And you just keep turning and turning and turning and turning until you get what you want. This one's got onions on the edge there, so it opened up, but that's where the onion is. These are tricks that you learn as you work in the kitchen and you take from the older people, you get ideas. And then your husband says, oh, you made the bowls, they look so nice. Not knowing somebody taught you. It's the little tricks that they don't know that you do that make things look nicer at the table. And definitely gets your children to eat. See? I'm gonna to have to get some cookie sheets out of these. These are gonna be a good size. But they smell so good. And you can see a half a cup of wheat flour in place of half a cup of the all-purpose does not interfere with it. See? Let me get some cookie sheets out because I'm going to put flour on two of them. how to make my own lard. So, uh, I think I want the fat from the kidneys and cook that down and render it. And yes, I know what rendering means because we render goose fat. And I hope if they can get goose, I might make a goose and then take all the fat from that goose and make goose fat. Because I remember my grandmother, and everybody said, the best dress comes from lard. I remember seeing it in the store, but it had preservatives in it, and I said, oh, well, I'm not using it. And I know you can can it, and it'll last for years. I just didn't know how. They said, you do it. You don't have to water bath or pressure can. It's just how you put it away. And I said, oh, so I read the trick on it. I said, oh, that's how they do it. Okay. I can do that. You know, there's just a few things I have to learn when you're missing a few steps. Like, I always kept on thinking that uh, plants that grow in the ground have to have antibiotics to fight to keep, you know, the food growing under the ground, the plant growing. And uh, the peelings on vegetables are antitoxin because that's to protect the fruit and vegetables that grow, right? So my thing is, is that, okay, if they do that, then we should collect them. I stick them in a bag, Ziploc bag, till I get one or two bags, and I cook those peelings down in my slow cooker for 24 hours. Then I can them and I have vegetable stock. And when I strain them, I just don't strain them. I put them through a towel and I squeeze it tight. But I want to get everything out of them. Because the way they're talking about, oh, we've got this new barium disease coming in, this disease, and 
Dotty dot 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 dot. You know, I am just like, I am done with it. So I question if it's that bad, then we're that unhealthy, we can't protect ourselves. So I started. I tell you, getting in a hold of a PDR was the best thing for me. Of course, it gives my doctors problems because I'm not going to listen to them, I'm going to argue with them. But uh, I take care of my health. Now, these are not going to look like what you get in the store and you buy. Remember, everything you make homemade is different. It's, it's going to taste different. The texture is going to be different. And Because uh, I can go back to when my grandmother was canning and my mother was canning. And then now when everything is bought. Coming up here, it's like you can't do anything. The government won't allow you to do this. Now they want to get rid of this and that. And, and it's control. They want to control you, and you have to uh, fight for your right to be. But we shouldn't have to fight because the country was based on those freedoms that we have. And remember, we didn't pay taxes. If the government wanted to do something, they had to come to us and ask us to buy saving bonds. And uh, they had to come to us to get our money. Now they just take it and do what they want. We should go back to that where they have to ask us what we want. Okay. And I think we'd have more money. And the government would then be on a budget. They couldn't ask for an increase in raise on their salaries without asking us. They can't go to war without asking us. They can declare war, but they won't get the money unless we agree to give it to them. All right. Well, they want us to flatten the balls to about a four inch circle. So we're talking a circle about this big, which is about palm from the thumb from here to your thumb. I'm going to show you I'm flattening them. them rise 45 minutes and that is it and then we're going to brush them down with oil and we're going to shred more cheddar cheese on top of them and we're going to cook them so we have 45 minutes and I will be back okay you're going to set your <coughs> oven to 400 make sure your shelf is in the middle of your oven There. Okay, now you're going to brush these buns with oil, any oil you wish, and then you're going to grate some cheddar cheese, which I've already done. And we are going to sprinkle it on. So let me get this up and we'll start doing it. Contamination, make sure that you get a small bowl and you put some oil in it. Because if you take it from the oil can, you might get yeast in it and stuff, and you don't want that. 
Oh, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Don't have to press so hard. I'm just going to sprinkle cheese on them now. These rolls are going to cook for 25 minutes and then you have to put them on a wire, wire rack to cool. If you leave them on the pan, they're going to go back to dough on the underside. So we we'll just have to wait until the oven gets up to 400, and we will be baking them. And I will show you after the first batch comes out. See you then. They're done now. Listen, take care. Bye-bye. Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. Here is 
cheesy onion hamburger buns. And we're gonna have bison burgers today with these. So take care and enjoy your day.